Well, good morning, good morning, good morning, Dunamis woman. How are you all on this Christmas Eve? Yes, it is the day before Christmas that we celebrate the life and the birth of Christ. So come on through, come on through, come on through. I know all of you all are up because you're getting ready. Some of you all may be cooking. Some of y'all may be ready to shop. Some of you all may be just laying around. You may be off. You may have to go to work. I don't know, but we are all here ready for day four of the spiritual empowerment in preparation for 2022 you all y'all come on in here as you saying good morning good morning ashley good morning valencia good morning jolene good morning denise good morning gail good morning good morning good morning good morning you just chilling tammy you just chilling all right just chilling and you all though on instagram all right i see your your, your names kind of come up differently on instagram than it is facebook so tell me your name i want to address y'all i want to say good morning i want to say merry christmas all right christmas eve christmas eve hi uh, lisa uh soon to be lisa mrs white uh how are you all hey annetta how are you glenda how are y'all you all it's wonderful it's wonderful i need to try to put in the comment 2022 just put up that 2022, 2022, because we're going to make it off the chain. We're not just going to make it, but we're going to make it off the chain. How are you, Connie? Please expect a call from me later on, love. You've been on my heart. How are you? How are you, Mother Melinda? How are you, Paula? How are you, Jacqueline? How are you? How are you? You all, all right, let's get it going. Tag another sister, okay? Y'all know what we do. Tag another sister. Our 2022, I see it rolling uh morning it's leslie come on how you doing leslie cheryl how are you that's what i'm talking about ig that's what i'm talking about put your name up there janine how are you how are you lakeisha all right good morning everybody all right i know it's some more women that's gonna come on here but we're gonna dig into it you all uh because this particular topic oh my god do you all realize that everything that i teach about it comes my way immediately Okay, I'm talking about putting it to the test, being proven, okay, being proven. I don't know about you all, but I'm seeing it being proven in my life, even before I'm teaching about it, is being proven, okay? And even the word of God says in Romans 12, 2, that we not being conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. But it goes a little bit further when Apostle Paul would say that you may prove the acceptable will of God for your life. So y'all put up there, prove. And I'm telling you what I'm talking about, what I'm teaching about, what I'm coming to empower you about, I, it's coming at me. I mean, even before I get it out, I'm being proven. Devetta, govern your mind. Govern your mind. Govern your mind. And it's going back to what I was talking about yesterday. Your power speaks. You ain't talking in 2022. So we might not have hit that number yet, but the word is working. Because <laughs> we are working it, all right? How are you, Miss Shannon? So, you all, before I get into it and before I have a word of prayer, thank you, prove, prove, prove. I need to see that up there. Uh, you all want to let you all know something about me a little bit more. And uh, I think transparency is the key to building rapports, building relations, moving into relationships. And I consider you all... Uh, to be a part of my life here in Dunamis Woman. You all are an intricate part of my life. And so I want you all to really know because I love the Lord with every fiber of my being. And I, and it's all about the kingdom. You know, I am not a religious person at all to go through formalities, to go through uh, 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 sayings and just to read a scripture, to have a feel good. And, and my private domains of my life, they don't, they're definitely not perfect. You know, I'll never be perfect, but I know that my imperfections, y'all put up their imperfections, shows me myself. And I believe God has given us our idiosyncrasies and our imperfections and our mess and our stuff, our issues, whatever term befits you very well to show you yourself. So with a little bit of transparency, I just don't believe that the word works. I don't believe the word works. I'm talking about the Bible. I believe the word works when you work it. Now, that's what I do believe. I don't believe just to say it, to talk it, to get a nice feeling. You know, and I don't know if you all agree, but that's okay. That's just my belief. I believe that I got to work it. And I have to know how to work it. 
Okay, because if I take it in my own mind, if I take it based upon my own thoughts, if I take it based upon what somebody taught me, based upon what they thought, based upon what they know, based upon what they think, based upon what they have been enslaved with, based upon our ancestors, it's going to jack my life up and my mind is going to be overtaken. My mind is going to be controlled and governed. Thank you for the agreement. It's going to be governed by somebody that I don't even know. And we have a lot of people in our midst, you all. Do you know the warfare is that the enemy not only wants your mind, but he wants to govern your mind. He wants to govern it. He wants to, that's not just control, you all. He wants to rule it. Y'all put up their rule, R-U-L-E. And so if I don't know how to govern my mind, and that's a lifestyle, you all, that's a lifestyle. I'm going to work it. I'm going to work you today. Okay. It's a lifestyle. It's a every minute. You can't keep looking at nothing else and nobody else. You got to know yourself. You got to know how to govern your mind. And I got to know what my mind consists of. And so this is why I am so into the mind, not only from a clinical therapist standpoint, uh, which is a part of a profession that I fulfill, but a biblical teacher, pastor, kingdom minded. I'm not dealing with the world no more. I'm not dealing with what they taught us no more. I'm not dealing with what my mama taught me. I love her dearly. But at the end of the day, what does the word say about my mind concerning Devetta? And when I wrote the book, Conquering the Battleground of Your Mind, you all, I sit down and I had to dig because if I look at the mind in one way in the word and I think it another way, it's not going to work. So when I talk about the mind, I want, I'm not going to talk about all aspects today. Okay, I'm going to get into one aspect of the mind. And if you don't have the book, Conquering the Battleground of the Mind, which I believe you do, because I believe basically everybody can get that book here in the community, uh, uh, go to the website and get it. It may be one or two more. Okay, but you got to know how to govern it. I, I talk about it and I'm, and I'm coming out with volume two in 2022. I'm going to be working it between the prayer and between mine because we, they go together. They go together. When you go to pray and your mind is jacked up, your mouth is saying one thing, but your mind is saying another and your heart is in a whole nother place and it's not getting the results. Y'all, if you want results for your life, if you want greater, just put greater. If you want greater, I want greater. I want greater. I want greater. I want greater. Put up there greater. And so the aspects of your mind, the dianoia, the prothumia, uh, the noose, uh, uh, the gnosko, I'm going to be dealing with the phreneo today. It's a Greek term for the mind, okay? But I'm not going to get all in depth with it, but I just want you to know that, all right? So <clears throat> let's go into it, you all, because it's going to be deep today, okay? It's going to get just a little deep for you, just a little deep, all right? So I'm going to teach you a little bit today because it's a spiritual empowerment. And when I say teach you, I am going to go to the word, but that's why I had to let you know, I don't believe the word works. If you don't work it, you're just quoting it. You're just doing something and your life has not yield the greater because his word says, Jesus said, I shall do greater works. We shall do greater works. That's why he had to ascend because now what he taught us, the Holy Ghost is here. The power of God, which is dunamis, is here and we shall do greater. So we're not here to proclaim dunamis woman like you in some sorority and you in some clique or you in something. I, I shut that down in the name of Jesus. It's about sharpening yourself based upon who you are. And if you don't know who you are, you're just going to start clacking and clicking with some other woman, all right? And we got enough of that, all right? So let's go there. If you're ready, put up there, I'm ready. Put up there, I'm ready, all right? I wanna define govern, okay? Because I don't think this is talked about and I wanna, we wanna know how to govern it in 2022, all right? Govern, and then I'm gonna use, a, uh, go to a familiar passage of scripture that we talk, people shout about, but at the end of the day, they hook up a goat, hey, and they don't know how to govern it because they don't know how to fight. They don't know how to fight. And I want you to know you got to know how to fight, not just fight, but you got to know how to fight. Govern. It means to exercise continuous sovereign authority over especially 
to rule with sovereign power. Now, I don't know if you are writing this down or taking notes, but I'm going to read it again. And then it's a key ingredient to this definition. And I'm going to give it to you, the key ingredient. It means to exercise continuous sovereign authority over especially, after that especially, semicolon. I mean, put a colon, not semicolon, colon. Because when you put that colon there, now it's giving you another thought after what is being said. So now when it says over, especially colon, now I got to think, how do I rule with sovereign power? How do I rule my mind with sovereign power? I can't do this within my own self. That sovereign power has been given to us. That sovereign power is dunamis. That sovereign power. And I got to know how to exercise continuous sovereign authority. But I got to also know especially how to rule with sovereign power. All right. Now we got this dunamis. We got dunamis power. And this is why even in, I'm, I'm going to just paraphrase it real quick. Um, when the disciples was out and they had went out by, by twos and 70 of them. And they saw uh, Satan just fall out of lightning. I mean, fall from heaven. And they saw demons cast out. And they just saw things that was happening. And they just began to get excited. You know, and they came back and they told Jesus. And he said in Luke 10, 19, he says, uh, hey, look, wait a minute. Don't get all excited now. You got to keep your mind. You got to govern your mind because I've given you power. I've given you sovereign authority over all the power, sovereign power of the enemy. See, Satan has dunamis. We got dunamis. The devil has dunamis. We have dunamis. But why are you getting so all in an uproar about what's happening about this power and about this sovereign power? And now you don't fail to realize the enemy is coming after your mind if you don't know how to use your sovereign authority and rule. Did that make sense, y'all? I hope y'all get it because this is my domain. This is my element. This is my lifestyle. And so since God has gifted me to work with the mind of his people. And I got to understand how to rule and govern my own mind because the enemy want to come and attack my mind, but I got to know how to govern it. Okay. So I got to know how to exercise my sovereign authority because in exercising my sovereign authority, it goes back to what I was saying a few days ago. I got to know who I am. I got to know who God has made me to be. Not what Mama Shaniqua want me to be. Not what Sally want me to be. Not what Grandma Ray Ray want me to be, but who am I? I have to take authority over my mind. I got to take sovereign authority over my mind. Now, let's go there. Is that understood? Is that understood? That's just, that's, and to exercise it, that's what I'm talking about. Now, before I go there, let's talk about one aspect of the mind. That's your forneo. And the forneo is to know how to exercise it because to exercise obedience, and that's what you do with your forneo. That's the part of your mind. That's the place where it looks like your skull. That's where your damages come from. That's where the hits of life hit you. This is where the victimization, this is where the pain that the enemy inflicts on you. This is why we believe in healing because guess what? It's that part of the mind that's where you exercise obedience. And a lot of times we can't exercise obedience. Why? Because we don't know how to sovereignly take authority and govern it. And then two, we don't know who we are. And then three, we haven't dealt with the pain and the victimizations of our past that happened in 2021, 2018, 2019, 2017, 1942, 1939, and even the stuff that my grandmother, my great, great grandmama dealt with because trauma goes throughout generations. So the higher you go in God, the deeper he goes in you. I need somebody to put that up there real quick. The higher you want to go in God to do greater works, the, the more and greater works he going to do inside of you. That's the relationship. So my freneo is the place that I want to exercise obedience, but that's the place of the, of the place that the enemy hit me. And so now I got to know how to use my weapon, how to use it how to use it, how to implement it. Okay. And this is so key right here. And I'm going to come back to the Ferneo and I'm going to speak about that a little bit more, but I want to go into a little bit deeper. Okay. Because guess what? Second Corinthians 10, four. Okay. And this is where we have to understand how do I rule? How do I rule? I can't rule man. I can't rule nobody. 
I can't even rule me. <laughs> if I don't rule my mind, this is why Apostle Paul said the things that I want, don't want to do, I end up doing. There's a warfare on the inside of me. There's a warfare in my mind. God, you told me to love my enemies, but when he get on my nerves and when he ain't doing what I want him to do and he looking like the devil himself and you telling me to love him, I got to love him. When they talk about me, when they gossip, when I'm, all these issues is coming up, when people are coming up against me and they think they're hurting me and want to take my thoughts, I got to govern my mind. So 2 Corinthians 10, 4, Apostle Paul had wrote to the church of Corinth again. Y'all put up there again. This is the second book. And so he had to reiterate because why? The relationship he was having with them, he was teaching them why? Because they were living in a town where there was a lot of whoredom, a lot of prostitution, a lot of rich folks was governing their mind. And he said in verse 2, I mean, verse 2, I mean, chapter God, my God, he was saying it in chapter 10, verse 4. He says, for the weapons, the weapons, I want y'all to write up, put their weapons, not a weapon, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. You all, I could take that one scripture, much less one, two, three, four, five, and six, and I could break it down to the lowest common denominator. Why? Because I've dissected it to the lowest common denominator. Why? Because I sure got tired of hearing it in church, and I sure wasn't seeing no change, particularly in my own mind. I was going, giving my tithes, giving my offering, got married, doing all kind of stuff, but my mind was not taught of how to govern it. And I think this is why God has led me into the path that he's led me on. Because what you're passionate about and what you also pissed about is what he will also use you to create change in the earth for his people. Okay? Now, I'm not going to dissect this whole scripture because time would not permit me for your life on Christmas Eve. Okay? But what I am going to deal with is a couple of terms here. Okay? And the one is mighty. Y'all put up there mighty. He says, because the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty. We get stuck on the carnal because we're trying not to be like the world. We don't want to do fleshly things. You don't want to have that sex. But at the end of the day, you end up falling in the bed. It was good. And then you come on out and say, oh, Jesus, help me, Lord. I got to get married because I don't want some more sex. And now you get in a jacked up situation more and more and more and more and more. If that may be you and your experience, say, hallelujah, I'm delivered. Okay, but mighty, it's a Greek term called dunatos, D-U-N-A-T-O-S, dunatos. It stems from the word dunamis, okay? And dunatos means powerful or capable. It's possible. It's possible. Y'all say it's possible. For the weapons of my warfare are not carnal, but they're capable. They're powerful. They're possible. These weapons are powerful. These weapons are capable. And now I got to know how to use them. I got to know how to use what the enemy use against me to pull down these strongholds, to pull down these thoughts, to pull down this stuff in my mind that I got to govern because when it come up, I can't feed it. I got to govern it. I can't feed it. I got to govern it. I can't feed it. I got to govern it. I got to catch the thought, the thought, the thought. Do you know one thought lead to another thought and another thought and another thought and another thought? And before you know it, your mind is gone. Come on now. If I'm telling the truth, say I'm telling the truth. Let's shame the devil this morning. My mama used to say, tell the truth and shame the devil. And the enemy have governed your mind. And not only him per se in your own thoughts, even stuff that happened to you, it looks the same, but it's not the same. It appears the same, but it's not the same. Oh, and don't let that Joe Blow come and tell you no lies. Don't let him come and tell you, ooh, you my wife. And you look at them biceps and you look at them triceps and you look at all that stuff that's going on. And you're dealing with somebody who wants to control your mind, which is the enemy, when he's saying govern your mind. We got to do greater in 2022. Greater, greater. And then you wonder, how in the hell did I get in this situation? How did the hell did this happen? Well, ain't nothing you get in that God ain't gave you the power to get out of. Ain't nothing you in that he ain't gave you the authority to govern your mind to get out of it. Everybody want a piece of your mind. 
Trust me, because if they get a piece of your mind, they got a piece of your money. They get a piece of your mind, they got a piece of your, your tail. <laughs> I was about to say something else. If they, they got a piece of that too, okay? They got a piece of everything, all right? So we got to know that these mighty weapons now are possible. It's possible to overtake me or it's possible for you to overtake it, rule it. Now, let's go with the weapons. Because when I talk about weapons, I got to know what I'm doing with this weapon. Because guess what? We're dealing in the spirit realm. You're not wrestling against the flesh and blood. It's in the spirit realm. And you got to know, and that's a strategic art. That's a skill. It ain't just because you quoted it and you shouted about it and you went on. But at the end of the day, if he can't govern your mind, he's going to govern your mind or your children to get to your mind. He's going to govern the mind of your spouse to get to your mind. He's going to govern the mind. It's all about the mind. Conquer them battlegrounds, all right? Weapons. This particular terminology that I'm giving you is used basically only six times in the New Testament, okay? And if you look it up, and I'm trying to give you all the backdrop because you can't do greater without getting an understanding. Because the word of God says in Proverbs, wisdom is the principal thing, get wisdom. But he also said in all that getting, get an understanding. And a lot of times we as women, we have wisdom. We done learned a lot, y'all. We done been through a lot. If, if that's you, say, say that's me. You ain't new here. You grew here. You ain't shallow. You got substance. You got strength. You got power. But what you need right now to get greater is an understanding. So when I'm talking about this weapon, if you look it up, it's not giving you all oh, weapons, weapons, weapons. It, it, it talks about it from a, 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 you being an instrument. This weapon is an instrument. This weapon is an armor. And you got to know how to use it. This is why kingdom teaching is so important. Kingdom coaching is so important. Spiritual guidance is so important. This is why we labor so extensively with those who want to grow. Because sitting here make you think you know, but laboring helps you grow. And this is why I do courses and I do prayer courses and I do books on the mind and I do this because when you invest in something, you're getting something back. You can go to church and put some money in and give an offering and they ain't even said hello. They just singing a song. But you, when you, it's a principle to the matter. Because when you invest and you get a return, you grow. When you invest, you get a return, you grow. You're growing, okay? Because you may know it, but you got to know how to implement it. So let me tell you about weapons. Weapons is a Greek term called hoplon. Hoplon, H-O-P-L-O-N, for those of you all who are very interested. And hoplon is a primary word to means to be busy about. To be busy about. Oh, it ain't nothing all that wonderful and revelatory and deep. It's very practical. It's very simple to be busy about. Because guess what? I can't govern my mind when I'm busy about this. I'm busy about that. One of the weapons that the enemy use for women, be busy. Be busy. I got to do this. I got to do that. I got to do this. I got to do that. That thought feed another thought. That thought feed another thought. That thought feed another thought. I got to do this for them. I got to do this for that. I got to do this for that. And you're using all your power predominantly, probably with folks who can do stuff they self. Oh, come on now. Then by the time you go to pray, you sleep. You lay there in your bed or you want to read your Bible. Come on now. Tell the truth and shame the devil. And you know you want to pray. You know you want to read your Bible. And you wake yourself up snoring. <laughs> Why? Because he know all I got to do is keep her busy. Not only just busy in her body, busy in her mind. How many overthinkers do I have here? Deanoia, overthinkers. Tell one thought, you're overthinking that. Speak one sentence, you say it, you're overthinking that. God say, do one thing, you overthink that. You're overthinking, your mind is always racing. Your mind is always going. Your mind is always moving. Your mind, your mind, your mind. And when your mind go, your body go. Then you got to go do this. Then you got to do that. And then you're getting 40, 50, 60, 70, and you think you're holy when you're tired. I'm just tired, Lord. I'm tired. Then, then your husband want to make love to you, you're squirming, you're tired. Because you had to do everything. And the, and the weapon is, you thought it was something so astronomical. Oh, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. And it's a primary word just to say to be busy about. When I saw that, I was like, Lord, this is crazy. 
And to be busy about means to implement an implementation or tool. An implementation or tool. An implementation or tool. This is why I was saying before, maybe yesterday or day before, information brings revelation. Revelation now requires implementation. Implementation requires activation. Activation requires you to have more impartation and impartation needs you to have some demonstration. We can't even get to the other part because we don't know how to implement because the enemy has used his weapons to keep us busy and it is an implement. That's all it is. It's an implement. Busyness is an implement. You think it's something natural, but it's spiritual. You think it's something natural, but it's spiritual. And then when you sit yourself down and you start thinking and some stuff come up, guess what? All this mess will come up in your soul. Now you don't even know what to think because busy causes distractions. When the enemy says greater works got to come forth in 2022, I need to sit you down. I need to show you some stuff. I need to let some stuff come up. The stuff that's been settled in your soul since mama died, daddy died, mama pookie died. You went to get married this time. You got a divorce. He talked about you. He abused you. He hit you. He did this. Mama didn't do it. Daddy did it. And all this stuff that in your subconsciousness, in your freneo is now settled in your soul. And God said for greater works to come forth, I got to sit you down. Oh, come on now. Sit down and learn of me. Sit down and be a disciple. Sit down. He didn't just put the disciples out there to be busy. He said, you got to sit down. He didn't have no shallow men. He had businessmen. He had men who knew how to make money. He had men. Peter was a fisherman. Peter wasn't broke. He chose wealthy people. He chose people who had something to go on about themselves. He knew how to get a businessman. So when I want to go, I got a boat. But in the meantime, Peter, I still got to teach you something. And I'm going to even teach you how to catch more fish. Because that was a well, good profession that was bringing him some money. But I still got to sit you down. I got to deal with your mess, Peter. I got to deal with your anger, Peter. I got to deal with some stuff inside of you, Peter. Matthew. Mark, you understand what I'm saying? Let's not go into 2021. They better sit down even the more so I can learn. I can reteach you some things. You all, my whole goal is to teach God's people. How can I do that? And I'm busy, 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 busy. Even in the work of the ministry, you could be busy, 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 and you think you're doing wonderful. Why? Because it appears to be for God. When he says, you are not just a minister, you a man or you a woman, you a woman in this case, Deuteronomy's woman. I want to sit you down. I want to show you some stuff. I want to teach you some stuff. So if he going to reteach me or teach me some new revelation, guess what? I'm going to give it to you. This is, not, this is why this prayer course is the first one of 2022. How many of you all got it already? I don't know. I don't look at that stuff. That's not for me to look at. But if you got it, tell me you got it. Yeah, I'm going to put it in your face. I'm going to put it in there because if you don't know what you're doing and you keep doing the same thing that you thought you was doing and these weapons of your warfare are now being more powerful and more capable of prospering because you're not pulling them down. Pull them down. And the only way you pull down these strongholds is to learn the word of God, to learn it not from a scriptural standpoint and you know how to memorize it and you know how to quote it and you got a rhythm to it and you got a rhyme to it and you got a hook to it. And yeah, the weapons of our warfare are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. It ain't working that way. It ain't working that way. Oh, I know the language. I know the genre. I grew up in it. Yeah. But it ain't working that way. Because this stuff is coming up, stuff that happened when you first knew of, of somebody and it's coming back up after all these years, after all these years, this mess is coming up. But God said, let it come up. Let it come up. 
Let it come up. Because it got to come up to come out. It got to come up to come out. It got to come up to come out. But now when it come up and it's going to come out, I got to reteach you. I got to refill you. I got to teach you what prayer is about. And this is why in that course, you all, I'm not just talking. I took every word that term pray and I broke it down for you to know the meaning, for you to know how to posture yourself, so for you to know how to position yourself. Okay, this is why it's position in prayer course, bit.ly, position prayer in prayer course. They'll put it up there for you. I don't remember all that stuff. I got too much I got to do. All right, Ariel put it up there, Michelle put it up there, y'all put it up there if you remember. But if you got the course, get it. And if you didn't get it, get it. If you got it, get it again, doggone it. <laughs> Bless somebody. This is Christmas. You're getting out there bad, all kind of tangible stuff. Walmart line was all the way out the door when my daughter went yesterday. All the way down the aisle. Oh, they making their money. But when it comes to the kingdom of God, you got all kind of excuses. I knew she wanted to sell something. I knew I ain't selling a dime thing. What I am is giving you truth. And either you want it or you don't. Because we got to understand it. We got to work it. Okay? We got to work it. We got to work it. We got to work it, you all. Last but not least. Romans 13, 4. I told you that particular scripture, you're only going to see six times. Um, that particular word, you're going to only see six times. Okay? But at the end of the day, I want to read one more scripture that pertains to weapon. Because I want you to get it. And that's Romans 13, 12. If anybody got it and you got it, your Bible, get, turn to it. But if not, guess what? Listen. Romans 13, 12. It says, the night is far spent. And the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor. That's the weapon. That's that hopline. Let us put on the hopline of light. Let us put on the busyness of light. Let us put on the work of light. Let us put on, because that's the only way that it's going to be capable. That's the only way it's going to be powerful. That's the only way it's going to be possible. I have to know how to not put on the works of darkness. Cast it off. Y'all put, cast it off. This is still 2021. Cast it off. Let's not go into 2022 with all these works of darkness in your mind. Govern your mind. Talk to yourself right now. Speak to yourself. Now, that's what I want you to do. Speak to yourself. And I want you to put in the comment, speak it to yourself. I shall do greater. Oh, I'm going to work you for right now. I shall do greater. Speak it. Speak it. Put it up there. I shall do greater. Speak it. I shall do greater. Speak it. I shall do greater. I'm casting off darkness. I shall have no shame. Speak it. No more shame. No more shame. Speak it. Speak it. No more timidity. Speak it. Speak it over your life. Don't just speak it as an affirmation. Don't just speak it. You got to work it too though. I shall believe all things is possible. Because that's what dunamis is. What is impossible is possible to God. He told Sarah, is there anything too hard for me? She was barren and she could not produce. Many of us was, are barren and we're not producing. But it's your year. It's your time. Not because it's 2022. Because of the hell that you've been through. Now judge it for your own self. Cast off darkness and put on the armor of light. And now we got to put on the armor of light. And the only way I know how to put it on is to know how to seek his face when I pray. I got to know how to position myself when I pray. I got to know how to posture myself when I pray. So go and get it. $67 before January 1st. Hard one. Okay. 2022 is going to go to all my courses. Prices of $97. So you better get it now. All right. Get, and, and, and in 2022, I'm going to have more courses. I'm going to have more, more information, revelation for implementation because we're going to see greater. Posture in prayer course, bit.ly. Posture in prayer course, bit.ly. Posture in prayer course. I got a few more days. I'm going to come back to you with it again. I'm going to come with some more teaching. I love the word, but you got to work it. 
The word just don't work because you got a Bible on your nightstand and you keep it in your car on the back seat and you go to pick it up when you go to church and then you're going to read a scripture because they had a sermon and they motivated you and you felt good. But when you come back, you don't know how to govern your mind because the same mess is waiting on you. Govern. Govern. Sovereign authority and use your sovereign power. I'm going to rule and govern my mind. I love you all. Enjoy your Christmas Eve. Prepare to celebrate your life with your family and your friends, whatever you're going to do, even by yourself, however it may be. But at the end of the day, Jesus is the reason for the season and he wants us to do greater works because that's what he said. Enjoy your day. Love you.